Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the uh, April 19th board meeting. I'd like to remind everybody this is, uh, meeting is being live streamed. Also, that the Rainbow District School Board would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and ancestral territory of the Anishinaabek, including the Tikkun Anishinaabek, and Wanapate Nations. We would like to acknowledge that we are situated within the Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850 and want to recognize the inherent rights of the Anishinaabek that maintains these lands from time immemorial. Thank you very much. I'd like uh, number one, we have a motion that the agenda of the board meeting of April 19th, 2022 be approved. I need a mover, please. Judy Cosmerly. Uh, seconder, please. Trustee Honda. Chair Clement, would, vote, you like please, to, would you like to Would you like to roll, roll call to Actually, begin? maybe what we could do is we could take a, a um, well, we'll do it through the pool vote to see who's here. How about that? Trustee Clement? Present. And in favor? In favor, yes. Okay. Trustee Dubosky? Not here. Trustee Dewar? In favor. Trustee Gibson? Trustee Hunda? In favor. Trustee Cosmerly? In favor. Trustee Morrison? In attendance and in favor. Trustee St. Jean? Present and in favor. Thank you, and Trustee Stringer. Present and in favor. And student Trustee Yao has uh, sent his regrets. Thank you. Thank you everybody for helping me out with step one. <laughs> uh, I, see, um, I see Trustee Gibson is on now. Thank you, Trustee Hunda. I was just, I was just waiting for an opportune time to let you know I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Thank Gibson. You, Trustee Gibson. Are you also in favor of, of the motion to approve the agenda? Yes, I am in favor. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, B, preliminary declaration of pecuniary interests. I see none. Uh, C, presentations. We have nil tonight. D, report from in-camera committee of the whole board, meeting of the whole board. Director, I don't think we have any. Not at this time. Thank you. E, O, business. Number one, previous, a motion that the minutes of the regular board meeting on Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022 be approved. I need a mover, please. Dina Morrison. A seconder, the trustee Dewar. Poll vote, please, director. Trustee Coma. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Trustee Morrison. In favor. Trustee St. Jean. In favor. Trustee Stringer. In favor. All in favor. Thank you, Director. Now, number two, this was something that was carried over from the last meeting. Masking motion update. It was a notice of motion. And the motion was that motion 20-R86, moved by Trustee Stringer and, trust, and, and uh, seconded by Trustee Honda, with reasonable exceptions, be it resolved that in Rainbow Schools, all students grade 1, 12 wear masks, and all kindergarten students wear masks and or face shields be rescinded. I need a mover for that, please. Uh, Trustee Morrison. 
and a seconder, Trustee Doerr. Questions? Uh, Trustee Morrison. Just a brief comment, um, uh, Chair Clamal, thank you. Um, is that this is a motion I don't think we have any authority to do anything but this. And as a result, I don't believe in being a Don Quixote and uh, uh, fighting windmills when I have no authority to do so. I don't think even board passed motions to continue to wear masks will be held up. I certainly don't wanna put our staff in a confrontation position with the public. And I've always said through this last two years that I will follow the science. And that means following the science, even when I have my own misgivings about the direction they've now taken. This is a direction by the, the provincial doc, medical doctor of health. And as a result, I will be supporting the motion to rescind mask wearing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Morrison. Uh, Trustee Dewar. You'll need your sound off, uh, Trustee Dewar, your sound is off. Sorry, thank you very much for that, uh, Trustee Clement. Um, I too feel that this motion could be, uh, could be rescinded or simply left on the books, it doesn't matter. The fact that the province has determined what is mandatory is what is mandatory. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, as, as has been said in numerous articles and so on, there's no way to enforce a mandatory mask wearing uh, if you don't have the, uh, if it's not under the, the auspices of the, of the province. Uh, I would like to just remind trustees, however, a couple of things about a rescinding a motion. First of all, uh, the motion requires two thirds vote, not just a simple uh, majority. It does require two thirds. And secondly, uh, I just wasn't sure whether people know or not, but abstentions count against the motion. So um, just to keep that in mind when we're voting on uh, a rescinding, a motion to rescind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Dewar. Any more additions, questions? I see none. Uh, Director, could you have a poll vote, please? Trustee Clamont. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Trustee Morrison. In favor. Trustee St. Jean. In favor. Trustee Stringer. In favor. It's carried. Thank you, Director. We'll go to number three now. Uh, 2021-2022 school year update. Director? Just take a moment to share our screen. So welcome back to all trustees after a well-deserved long weekend. As for our presentation tonight, I'll share that we have moved from mandates at this point to personal choice and we are learning to live with the pandemic, which is now in its sixth wave. This slide contains data from public health suburban districts for a two week period in mid-March. You will notice that the vaccination numbers continue to increase. And at that time, 54% of children ages five to 11 had received dose one and almost 33% had received dose two. Rates of vaccination among 12 to 17 year olds are above 80%. Here's a graph of the vaccination rates on March 23rd. And just as a note, this was the last weekly update issued by Public Health, Sudbury and Districts. Regular reporting of COVID-19 data, including vaccination coverage rates is available on the Health Units website. 
Public Health Subrian Districts is assessing its public reporting of COVID-19 data as the pandemic evolves. Our local health unit will keep communities informed of any changes. And if you're interested, please visit phsd.ca slash COVID-19 slash data. We are pleased to report that the Lancer Dome continues to be well used by our schools. And the next slide shows details that you may not be able to read, but you will see that the dome is certainly being well used uh, for community events on weekends um, and during weeknights for soccer, flag football, track and field training, and slow pitch. Those are the community use bookings you see on the screen. The schedule of bookings for April provides a good sense of how popular the dome is within the community, and we also have many bookings for May. In summary, physical activity is alive and well, and we all know how important this is to student achievement, well-being, and happiness. In addition, community use of other school facilities like gymnasiums and libraries also begin today, Tuesday, April 19th. We have been accepting bookings for this since April 4th, and we now have fully resumed community use of schools in Sudbury, Espinola, and Manitoulin, and that comes as good news to the communities we serve. On April 4th, Public Health Subrian Districts asked us to distribute a letter to principals and a letter to parents and guardians. The letter contained links to a poster and a fact sheet. The letter indicates, and I am quoting, the province has lifted masking requirements in most settings, including schools. Public Health Subrian Districts continues to strongly recommend the use of well-fitted masks among students, staff, volunteers and visitors to pre protect against COVID-19. The pandemic is not over and our area continues to have higher rates of COVID-19 compared with the province. Prevention is the key and wearing a mask and practicing physical distancing are added layers of protection as is getting vaccinated when eligible and staying home when ill. The poster highlights many reasons individuals are required to wear a mask and there are some situations where there are. To, stop, to help stop the spread of COVID-19, individuals are required to wear a well-fitted mask at all times when outside the home, in public spaces, which includes school and childcare, unless they are under two years of age when, and these are some scenarios when they are required. One, they are close contact of someone with COVID-19. This is a case where they're required to wear a well-fitted mask for 10 days after their last exposure. Two, they live with someone who has COVID-19 and they've been exempt from self-isolation because of their age and vaccination status. They are required to wear well-fitted masks for 10 days following their last exposure. And three, they have finished their self-isolation period and they themselves are recovering from COVID-19 or COVID-19 symptoms. And in this case, they are once again required to wear a mask for 10 days after symptom onset or a positive test result. And four, they have traveled outside of Canada within the last 14 days. The fact sheet emphasized the importance of being kind and respectful. While wearing a mask is strongly recommended by our local health unit, it is not mandatory. And we continue to respect personal choice. The letter from Public Health, Subrian Districts, which contains the links to the poster and fact sheet is posted on our website at rainbowschools.ca. And you can follow the link from the alert bar on the homepage to easily access the information. Also, since our last meeting, we shared public health social media messaging on our Facebook page. And here's one example. And here's another example. On April 7th, bookings began for the fourth doses for individuals who are 60 years of age or older. And we continue to share the link to vaccination opportunities listed on public health website on rainbowschools.ca. Also on April 7th, we held our last regularly scheduled conference call with the Deputy Minister of Education. These calls have been occurring for the past two years. While we no longer have a standing date, calls will be set up on short notice as required. This is not a sign that the pandemic is over. It is, however, another way of recognizing that we're all learning to live with the pandemic. EQAO is confirmed on another note that there will be no assessment for students who took grade nine math in the first semester. However, 
the grade nine math assessment will proceed as planned for semester two. And all other assessments will also proceed as planned. On April 11th, the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Ontario hosted a news conference, his first since announcing the end of mask mandates. Like our local Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kieran Moore is strongly recommending that masks be worn, but he confirmed that he would not be reinstating mask mandates as this, at this time, beyond what has been required all along, like in high-risk settings, for instance. Masking, therefore, in schools remains a personal choice. Dr. Moore did encourage the layering of protective measures, even when they're not legally required. And he also said that getting vaccinated and getting a booster dose when eligible is the best defense against COVID-19. And as a point of information, antivirals are also available for high-risk individuals who contract the virus. There is a screening tool online to determine eligibility for this medication. The Ministry of Education also announced that schools will be required to report daily absences for students and staff in the absence reporting tool for the remainder of the school year. This data is uploaded to Ontario.ca and when absences are above 30% above the baseline or what the school normally experiences on any given day, we advise public health sub and districts and they follow up with the school to determine the prevalence of COVID-19. You may recall that schools report all absences regardless of the reason. The Ontario.ca website includes a list of schools that are closed due to COVID-19 and to date, all rainbow schools have remained open in the current school year. Last fall, when I began in my new role, we set out on a journey to renew our vision, mission, values, and priorities. And I wanna thank you all for your input, guidance, and leadership throughout this very important process. I'd also like to thank our many partners in education who participated in consultations. Our new strategic directions, and you see a draft copy on your screen, will guide us as we move forward. I am pleased this evening to share this with you. For our cover, we have chosen a photo of Coda Brido simon at the challenge meet. As an aside, we will be hosting the challenge meet in June, along with all of our regular track and field events, and this will come as very good news to our students and staff. Back to our cover, Coda is currently in grade two at Gene Hansen Public School. And his shirt says, commit to succeed. And this sends a strong message, as does the smile on Coda's face. We want all of our students to have the, every opportunity to be all they can be, have a strong sense of belonging at school, and to be happy. You will notice that we've applied our compass imagery from the consultation process to the strategic directions document. We have also used the four color blocks in the board's branding, two elementary colors and two secondary colors to illustrate the colors of the rainbow. Our vision, mission, and values are featured in the center of the document. Our schools will be invited to use this center spread as posters in their schools. We maintain the circles and the graphics for continuity from our last strategic directions. They re represent the circle of life, our commitment to continuous improvement, our focus on lifelong learning, and most importantly, everyone joining together towards a common goal with the students at the center of decision-making. Our values provide the foundation for our corporate culture and the character attributes that we model and teach in our schools. The seven grandfather teachings of humility, bravery, honesty, wisdom, truth and respect, and love are braided together with resilience, equity, and community. The images in the strategic directions celebrate equity and diversity and honor truth and reconciliation. We've showcased students of all ages and grades in curricular and co-curricular activities in warm, welcoming, and inclusive learning environments in the classroom, on the schoolyard, or playing field, and in the community. Our six priorities are featured on the back cover of Strategic Directions, framing a photo of a student in one of our trades programs. The circles are the same size to purposefully illustrate that no one priority is more important than the other. 
priorities are student success and achievement, truth and reconciliation, literacy and numeracy, mental health and well-being, environmental education and sustainability, equity and inclusive education. And while the goal is graduation, our words capture a bigger mission and vision for learning and growth beyond Rainbow Schools. Together, we prepare students to become lifelong learners, achieving their full potential as confident, caring members of our society, our mission. We are leaders in learning, inspiring success for all students by reaching minds and touching hearts, our vision. We will continue to bring strategic directions to life. Strategic directions is the compass that will guide us as we move forward with the board improvement and equity plan. And the Ministry of Education has recently advised school boards that the new template is delayed but will be ready in the fall. So I'd like to thank, of course, as always, the incredible work of Nicole Shrett, and I know she's had help from Jennifer Chartrand, Pata, in this plan. This is the draft. We're working on finalizing it, but it does capture a tremendous amount of work that we set out and began in the fall, and certainly uh, is a great communication tool and guidance tool for all our students, staff, and our community. One of our priorities is equity and inclusive education. And in this school year, we've been very purposeful in our efforts to be inclusive of the diversity of students and families that we serve, which builds awareness and understanding with all of our students, staff, and families. If you've been following the board's Facebook page, you will notice our messaging, and I'll share just a few recent examples with you. I would like to thank Superintendent Judy Noble and the members of the Equity and Inclusive Education Committee for their leadership. And I'd also like to acknowledge Jennifer Bata Chartrand in communications for her work on these important messages. For example, International Women's Day took place on March 8th. March 31st was National Indigenous Languages Day. And you're seeing on our screen some of our posts. April 2nd was World Autism Awareness Day. And April 7th was World Health Day. These are just a few examples. We also share these messages on our FYI site internally for all staff. April 22nd is Earth Day, an opportune time for staff and students in Rainbow Schools to show they care by celebrating this year's theme, Invest in Our Planet. From an Indigenous perspective, we can invest in our planet, Chicago by taking the time to acknowledge the life-giving qualities of the Earth and spending our personal time connecting with land, water, and nature. In Rainbow Schools, we encourage eco-friendly practices and sustainable solutions inside and outside of the classroom. On Earth Day, we invite the community to join us as we reflect on our personal and collective actions and their profound impact on the environment. Let us commit to adopting behaviors that protect and preserve our planet. Leading up to Earth Day, schools will join a special live stream with the executive director of David Suzuki's foundation on April 21st. To join the live stream, schools must be registered for their eco school certification, and also they must pledge to add a community cleanup to their environmental plan. It's also a pay it forward. Another priority is mental health and well-being. The expert who led the crisis response to the 1999 school shooting in Tabor, Alberta, just eight days after the Columbine school shooting, will, will deliver a special presentation for the community on Tuesday, April 26th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. This is a not-to-miss virtual event with Kevin Cameron, the executive director of the North American Center for Assessment, Threat Assessment, and Trauma Response and it's being hosted by the Violent Threat Risk Assessment Steering Committee. You've heard Kevin Cameron speak, and you know he's a dynamic speaker, and he'll build upon the lessons he learned, also from Frank DeAngelis, retired principal of Columbine High School, who was in Sudbury just last week, on Monday, April 11th, and Tuesday, April 12th, to share his experience. Participants will gain insight into how a collaborative response to complex events, such as trauma or serious violence, better serves the community by working together. Maintaining a strong sense of safety and belonging in school is critical to mental health and well-being. 
The Violent Threat Risk Assessment Steering Committee brings community partners together to provide a collaborative response to a person of concerns threat making behaviors. Partners from the City of Greater Sudbury, Greater Sudbury Police Service, school boards, post-secondary institutions, and community organizations will gather on Tuesday, April 26th to sign the fourth edition of the Community Threat Assessment Protocol. The goal is to keep the community safe by intervening before a violent incident occurs. Rainbow District School Board invites parents and guardians to join a webinar on Parenting for Positive Mental Health on Thursday, May 5th from 7 to 8 p.m. Part of the Children's Mental Health Week in Rainbow Schools, this webinar will be presented by Amanda Lamb, Director of the Center for Family Initiatives at the Pine River Institute. All caring adults are welcome to attend. With a focus on attunement, connection, and setting limits, the webinar will help parents and guardians understand their children's behaviors and development in order to respond with intention and provide mental wellness and growth. Participants will gain an understanding of their parenting style and the challenges parents and guardians face when children push back. Located near Shelburne, Ontario, Pine River Institute helps adolescents who are struggling with addictive behaviors and other mental health issues. As director of the Center for Family Alternative Initiatives, Amanda Lamb brings a deep commitment to the well-being of youth and their families through empathy, acceptance, compassion, positive communication, and relationships. She hopes that by educating and supporting families early on, they can foster greater resilience and sustain their mental wellness through difficult times, including life transitions. In addition to the parent webinar, Rainbow District School Board's mental health team has prepared resources for the school's Children's Mental Health Week from May 2nd to May 6th. Teachers can access links to social media posts, activities, videos, quizzes, articles, and classroom discussion prompts organized by age group. The primary resource is a slide deck that includes a daily theme-based activity with links to classroom content on what is kindness or be kind to yourself. Topics such as caring communications and being kind to others and being kind to the environment. Children's Mental Health Week is being promoted on social media using hashtags kindness blooms and all about empathy the theme for this year's celebration. And with the arrival of spring, the Kindness Ninjas at Larchwood Public School completed their first act of kindness in the community in two years. They traveled to their local value mart to hand out kindness cards and fresh flowers to all customers. You see a beautiful picture of them hard at work. I'm also pleased to share that grade 10 students from Espanola High School captured a bronze medal at the Sudbury Regional Science Fair held on April 10th for their project on using wind-generated electricity to charge an electric car. Richard and Denzel Brown also earned two special awards, the OPG, Ontario Power Generation Innovation Award, and the Clean Air Sudbury Award. The goal of their project was to create a system to change a second battery, to charge a second battery, by harvesting the wind energy from an electrical vehicle as it's driving. It brings us tremendous pride to see that these young scientists are focused on innovation as well as sustainability because they want to make the world a better place. Rainbow Schools will celebrate Education Week from May 2nd to May 6th. And for all everyone's information, a list of activities will be posted on the board website. The start of Education Week also marks Music Monday. Our schools and our students have benefited immensely from the Joan Mantle Music Trust. Almost $300,000 has been raised since the trust was established in November of 2008. This has enabled the Rainbow District School Board to revitalize its elementary and secondary school instrumental music programs by allocating funds for musical instruments and equipment to keep schools on a rotating basis. The trust also accepts the donation of new and used musical instruments and allocates them to schools who could use them. Earlier this spring, the Joan Mantle Trust Steering Committee invited patrons of the trust 
and its international dinner, which was postponed once again this year to make a donation. I am pleased to share that the spring fundraising campaign has been very successful with $7,882 raised to date. On behalf of the board, I'd like to thank all donors for their generous support of music education in Rainbow Schools. As you know, our longtime chair of the Joan Mantle Music Trust Steering Committee is Ralph McIntosh. And I'd like to say thank you to Ralph for his ongoing leadership. It's greatly appreciated. Rainbow Schools will host in-person kindergarten orientation registration sessions in May. This is an opportunity for children and parents and guardians to meet their educators, tour the school, visit the classroom, connect with their cl uh, classmates and get excited about starting school in the fall. And it's also an opportunity for our team of educators and sports staff to say, welcome to Rainbow Schools. At the kindergarten orientation sessions, children will receive a Rainbow Schools bag and learning materials. New this year, we have developed a button to greet students in English, French, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. And I'd like to thank Hazel Fox Recollet for leading this in initiative. Hazel has developed buttons for the incoming class at Cyril Varney last year, and they were very well received by families. So this year, she expanded the concept from an Indigenous education perspective. Our youngest students in all schools will receive these buttons in their welcome bag. The button will be accompanied by a bookmark to share the meaning behind each color and symbol of the medicine wheel and provide context to our mi vision, mission, values, and priorities. Thank you, Hazel. Our schools will share these buttons with pride as we invite parents and guardians to pin them on their children's bags and backpacks as they get ready to start school. Diane Dennison of Algonquin Road Public School received the Learning Disabilities of Sudbury Outstanding Educator Award this year. Diane Dennison has always gone above and beyond to ensure that students with learning disabilities are successful. If you close your eyes and imagine the perfect teacher to support students, are they kind, caring, knowledgeable, and excited to teach? How about organized, hardworking, and a strong communicator with all stakeholders? This is Diane Denniston through and through. She is the teacher you want your children to have on your side, says Principal Trevor DeWitt, who nominated her for this year's award. Congratulations to Diane Denniston of Algonquin Road Public School. I'm also very proud to share that Superintendent Leslie Fisher has also been recognized provincially. Last spring, as Principal of Program, Leslie Fisher received the Difference Maker Award from the Ontario Principals Council. The award recognizes administrators for their work supporting learning and teaching. Recipients are nominated by their peers, which speaks volumes about the impact Leslie Fisher has had and continues to have in Rainbow Schools. Superintendent Fisher received her award at a provincial celebration held on March 25th. In closing for my update, I'd like to remind everyone that staff and students must continue to self-screen every day before leaving home for school using the COVID-19 school and child care screening tool. We continue to advise students and staff to screen for COVID-19 as part of your morning routine, and this has not changed. Our primary message also remains the same. If you're sick, please stay home. If you're well, come to school, and when in doubt, wait it out. If you need rapid antigen tests, kits to determine if you have COVID-19, they are available in all of our schools. Of course, I cannot thank our students, families, and staff enough for their ongoing patience and understanding. They've demonstrated and continue to demonstrate remarkable resilience, which is one of the values we model and teach in Rainbow Schools. Let's all continue to be kind and considerate as we respect personal choice. Kindness, patience, and gratitude will hold us in good stead as the pandemic evolves. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Thank you. Chair Coleman, I think your microphone's off. It is. <laughs> Thank you, Director. Uh, appreciate uh, 
the report, uh, great report. Nice to see all the activity going on in our schools. Any questions, please? I see one, uh, Trustee Stringer. To you, uh, Chair Kamon, to Director Bridget. Um, I'm just wondering about our staff and uh, student absentee numbers. Um, are we being challenged in staffing classes or is that uh, our staff absentees haven't been great? And I'm wondering about our student absentees um, due to COVID or otherwise. Through you, Chair Clement, I would uh, tell you that we are keeping track of our staff absenteeism and uh, it's, it's really, uh, a factor of you know trends in the pandemic and and how things are going and when staff are ill we ask them to stay home um, i would tell you that our staff is incredible i'm so proud of them because they've persevered through so much and you know they're following the uh, guidelines that are in place and certainly our staff are are working very hard in support of our students i would tell you that um, after the march break our trends actually improved for for a few weeks, last week was was a bit of an increase, but nothing that um, we weren't able to handle. But I would tell you it's not easy. I don't want to say that uh, with any uh, casual tone to my voice. It's it's a challenge for our principals, and our principals, as I've said on many times, are unsung heroes for the daily work they do. But we are hopeful that uh, you know this week has been off to a good start. It's only one day, and we're hoping that that trend continues after the long weekend. And we've uh, done some things to mitigate, um, you know, some of the challenges schools face. We also are trying to make sure that all of our employees are working in their in their areas. We had reassigned some of our consultants and coordinators for a period of about eight weeks, and uh, we've recently stopped doing that. Um, and we are working through the rules as we see them. So uh, I just want to thank our staff for their resilience and for you know their great uh, efforts to come to work each day and for also when it's necessary and they're not well, uh, for following the guidelines in those cases as well. So can't thank our staff enough and our principals for their leadership in that regard. In terms of our students, um, largely the same type of response. We've seen you know, some peaks and valleys over the weeks. Certainly we're in a better place than we were in January and February, uh, but we did see a little bit of a peak recently. Nowhere near what we've seen in the past, but, um, you know, as spring weather improves and maybe as uh, windows and more outdoor play evolves, we hope to see a similar trend to what we saw last year where numbers really declined uh, in May and June. And we're hopeful and optimistic that that might be the case. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Any more questions? I see none. Go to the next question is number four, tenders a request for proposal. I see none. Number five, reports and recommendations from board committees. I don't see any. New business grants for student needs. Is there a report on that, Director? Which <laughs> Superintendent Baznet will speak to that. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Bazinet. Thank you, Chair Clema. Uh, my apologies for turning on the uh, audio instead of the uh, video. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, provide you this evening with a few highlights of the 2022-2023 Grants for Student Needs funding, also referred to as the GSN funding. The information was released on February 17th of 2022, which is an early release and very much appreciated as it allowed us to enter into our teacher staffing process uh, with some no, uh, known certainty on certain funding as it relates to staffing positions. At a provincial level, the GSN funding is projected to be 26.1 billion, which is an increase of 2.7% over the current fiscal year. The per pupil funding is projected to be $13,059 per student. In the past few years, each board has been receiving uh, a supplement within the GSNs 
referred to as the Supports for Students Fund. And this was funding that was established in the last round of central bargaining. And even though the majority of uh, the agreements, central agreements, will be expiring on August 31st of 2022, the ministry is continuing for a time-limited funding of next year. At this time, the supports for students funding and for Rainbow Board that represents $1.6 million and that is great news as it allows us to continue with the funding of various positions within the board that have been there over the past few years. The ministry is also continuing with COVID-19 funding. Although it's changing the title, it is now called the COVID-19 Learning Recovery Fund. And for our board, it represents $2.2 million for additional staffing and it is broad based in that it allows us to address learning recovery, the implementation of the first year of a fully de-streamed grade nine curriculum, the delivery of remote learning, additional supports for special education and maintaining the enhanced cleaning standards as it relates to September of this year. Part of the requirements of this funding is that the boards would offer the remote learning option for the 2022-23 school year, uh, which is why we did have our survey and therefore we're establishing that uh, virtual school, both for elementary and secondary students. The ministry is also continuing with a supplement for uh, under the language grant as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic uh, affecting uh, a decline in recent immigration. Therefore, the supplement will be continued for an additional year uh, for this coming September. In terms of student mental health investments, uh, we will see an increase in the uh, student mental health uh, grant and once we populate our EFIS, which uh, is uh, one of the activities that will be happening in the next month or so, we will then be able to quantify at the provincial level, it represents $13.8 million. Also new with this funding is it will be enveloped, meaning that any uh, residual funding that is not spent in the fiscal year will need to be earmarked and enveloped so that it moves forward into the next fiscal year. Under mental health, the ministry is also introducing a new investment. It is $10 million at a provincial level and they will be providing additional information to boards as uh, the year progresses. The ministry is also uh, enhancing the supports for students with special education needs. It was provided through a PPF and now is being rolled into the GSNs. And it is to address the local priorities, uh, such as retaining additional educational professional, paraprofessional staff for our students with special education needs. The ministry is also increasing the special equipment amount, the SIA amount, to support more assistive technology for students. New to next year is uh, a new funding for what is termed broadband network operations. It is to provide school boards with some funding to expand their networks as it relates to providing improved digital learning within classrooms and the, cla and the learning environments within our schools. Once again, it uh, is uh, based on uh, a per pupil uh, basis in the pupil foundation grant. And once we proceed with populating EFIS, uh, we will then know and be able to quantify this amount for our board. The ministry will be increasing the salary level for our principal and vice principals groups as they have just concluded central uh, negotiations and bargaining. And they will increase the benchmarks to cover the first year uh, which has the 1% increase in salary. The ministry is providing additional funding to the benefits trusts so that uh, it can also incorporate the anticipated increases in providing those benefits to the various employee groups. 
As I previously stated, we expect to be into central bargaining given the expiration of the uh, respective collective agreements on August 31st of this year. And the ministry will be providing uh, what is termed the central employer bargaining agency fee allocation to each of the respective school boards. In terms of our school operations uh, allocation uh, for the non-staff component, uh, the ministry is providing a 2.3% uh, cost update to assist school boards with managing the increase in the commodity, commodity prices which are electricity, natural gas, insurance, and other facility costs, as well as providing additional funding of 3.15%, given that uh, we will be experiencing increased costs related to the need to run our ventilation systems longer, as well as maintain our ongoing increased filter changes within our systems in our schools. Under the heading of student transportation, a cost update of 2% is included in the funding. However, the board by board allocation is not yet released at this time. Once again, this, this upcoming year, the ministry will be rolling in some PPF funding, which is outside of the GSNs into the GSN funding. Uh, these include the parents reaching out grants, which is uh, $18,675 for the Rainbow Board, which will be moving from a PPF into a new component of the School Foundation Grant. The Ministry is also moving funding that was external to the GSNs as it relates to FSL, French as a Second Language, uh, into the GSNs as part of our language grants. The PPF that was termed the Well-Being and Mental Health Bundle, and for our board that was $27,265, uh, is being moved from a PPF into the mental health uh, and well-being allocation. For ongoing teacher professional learning, uh, the PPF, uh, previously known as the Learning and Innovation Fund for Teachers, will move from PPF status into the GSN and for the Rainbow Board that represents $45,000. For secondary student uh, funding, uh, the Ministry is continuing with changes to the way it funds secondary uh, schools and it is called the Differentiated Funding for Online Learning. Trustees will recall that there is a new graduation requirement that has an online component for uh, secondary students. And even though there are, there are provisions for students to opt out of this uh, online uh, provisions, the ministry is moving ahead and they are making the assumption that approximately 15% of secondary students will take one online course in 22-23, which is an increase uh, from the current year. So once again, at this point in time, it is not known whether or not there will be some form of reconciliation process whereby boards can provide feedback to the ministry on the actual uh, uptake or uh, those who are opting out of this online uh, courses. And when we speak of online, not to be confused with uh, virtual school offerings, this is the secondary uh, e-learning online uh, courses. Uh, the final funding uh, comments relate to capital. Uh, pleased to announce that the school condition improvement uh, will increase next year to $12.6 million, which is an increase of $1.3 million over current fiscal year, and that is to support our ongoing improvements at our various schools. So very welcome news. And as well, the school renewal component, which is part of GSN, uh, will remain next year as it currently is for the current year, which is $3.2 million. So the final component of my update is related to the financial reporting timelines. And I wanted to uh, inform trustees that the finance department, uh, we are experiencing a backlog in terms of financial reporting 
and I'll provide the details in the following statements. Uh, trustees will recall that we have yet to finalize our financial statements for the fiscal year that ended August 31st of 2021. Uh, typically that would have occurred at the December 2021 board meeting. However, we encountered some various challenges when we converted our student information system. Uh, we moved from Trillium into Aspen. And as a result of that transition, which occurred last spring, we were delayed in finalizing our enrollment uh, for the official count dates, which would have been October 31st of 2020 and March 31st of 2021. And that information needs to be uploaded into EFIS uh, from ONSYS, which is the other database. And uh, because of that delay, we could not finalize the revenue position for the board. Uh, pleased to announce that the upload did occur in early April of 2022. Uh, therefore, it allowed internally our finance department to finalize uh, our work for the year-end financial statements. And now the documents are currently in the hands of KPMG, our external auditors. And in discussion with them earlier today, uh, with your support, proposing the following two uh, timelines to finalize our financial statements. We do require an audit committee uh, prior to a board meeting. So what is being planned is an audit committee meeting for Monday, May 2nd at 3 p.m. And with your support, we're proposing that the Tuesday, May 3rd strategic planning committee meeting uh, be canceled and converted to a board meeting, which will allow our trustees to finalize the financial statements uh, once again for the fiscal year ending August 31st of 2021. Our second priority in terms of financial reporting is we uh, must submit a March 31st financial report. It is a financial report very similar to a year end it covers the period of September of 2021 to March 31st of 2022. And it's an annual requirement and the reason it exists is so that school board financial information can be incorporated into the provincial books because their fiscal year ends on March 31st of each year. So that is uh, our second priority, which we are currently working on now that we are uh, transferred the documents into the hands of the external auditors for the year end and the due date for that financial report is May 13th of 2022 and uh, we're working very diligently to meet that deadline. And finally we speak of the financial uh, requirements for submitting the budget for 2022-2023 of which all the GSN updates previously outlined referred to. So that deadline is uh, due uh, June 30th of 2022. And it is our goal once again to meet that deadline. Uh, however, we uh, need to make one change. Uh, trustees will recall that during our budget process, which was approved in November, we had planned to present the first draft to you of the budget at a board meeting on May 24th of 2022. Uh, that is too soon, we cannot make that deadline. Therefore, we would need to defer and present to you the first uh, uh, review of the budget at the Strategic Planning Committee meeting scheduled for June 7th of 2022. And then we would have the June 28th board meeting uh, for final approval and submission. Uh, so that Chair Clement concludes my update and be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Bazinet. I see uh, Trustee Cosmerly. Just one question through through you, uh, Chair Clement. Uh, does the province charge us um, a late fee, uh, like a, an interest charge or whatever for for uh, the budget, or not the budget, the um, the year end not being submitted on time? 
Uh, thank you, through you, Chair Clement. Essentially, uh, uh, the mechanics uh, behind what the uh, province does is when they submit uh, the deadline scheduled to us, uh, they always incorporate the statement that failure to file uh, on time could result in withholding of funding. So it's not an interest cost or a penalty. However, we've been working very closely with the ministry and they were well aware of some of our challenges with our transition of our student information system. Uh, we've not been the only board that has faced similar challenges and essentially they've been very accommodating in working with us and to date uh, there has been no negative impact on the filing of our financial statements. Great, thank you. Thank you, I see uh, Trustee Morrison. Thank you, Chair Clement. First, I just wanna thank Superintendent Bazinet. Thank you very much for this update, Superintendent Bazinet. What I'm really looking forward to seeing at the upcoming meetings, because what it makes sense to me, it really helps me decide whether I should be celebrating or concerned, is when we're, we're getting an update based on impact on Rainbow. What's gone up, what's gone down. So I'm looking forward to that at future presentations, Superintendent Bazinet. But overall, just wanted to thank you very much for that. And, and I, just as, as one voice and one on this, uh, Chair Kamal, I have no problem with an audit committee coming up in the next week or so. Uh, we've been trying to get this together since December, because normally we do the audit committee reviews the financial statements in December prior to the December board meeting. And as Superintendent Bazinet has already aptly summarized, the financial st statements weren't ready for us to review. So now that they are, Dennis, Great, I'm glad to see we're going ahead with the audit committee meeting. And I too then will be supportive of the board meeting being held the next night. Thank you, Chair Clement. Thank you, Trustee Morrison. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Bazinet. I was gonna say, yes, I agree with the second. And then the third, because we're, we were gonna have an agenda setting uh, tomorrow anyways, and I was gonna be respectful and just say, well, <laughs> we'll put it in the hands of uh, uh, the chair of that committee, but she has gracefully uh, allowed us to have that meeting on the on the third. So we'll move on with that then. We'll have that meeting on the second and the third, right? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Audit committee meeting one day and the next day having a board meeting instead of a strategic planning meeting. I'm good with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trustee Morris. I appreciate that. Um, uh, we have a request for a leave of absence. I think uh, Michael Yao and uh, possibly Linda DeBoski be granted a leave of absence from the April 29th, uh, April 19th, 2022 board meeting. I need a mover, please. Trustee Dewar, a seconder. Trustee Quiver, Osmerly. Poll vote, director. Trustee Colon. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Trustee Morrison. In favor. Trustee St. Jean. In favor. And Trustee Stringer. In favor. All in favor. Thank you, Director. Uh, we'll go now to Director's remarks. Thank you, Chair Clement. I do have a few remarks tonight. Um, as you know, our Rainbow staff is absolutely incredible. And the amount of work being done in support of our students is so very impressive. I wanna take a moment to share my appreciation for the tremendous efforts of our dedicated, caring and professional staff. And what I'm going to share with you is far from an all-inclusive list, but it is a series of updates and a quick snapshot of some of the things that our Rainbow District School Board staff are hard at work on at this time. Now, when I say it's a quick update, it might be a quick update, but the results and the efforts to complete them take considerable time and effort. So I'll start with enrollment. Our principals will work very hard to submit projections for enrollment and this information is now being used for staffing. 
And as of uh, currently in elementary, in October of 2021, it was predicted that we'd have 8,742 students. The predictions are now in for next October, and that has risen from 8,742 as a prediction to 8,886 as a prediction. So trending in a good place in terms of the prediction, and you will recall that our March actual was well over predicted at 9,145, as students tend to register at some points in the fall, and our enrollment goes up, we do take a cautious approach and try to predict what we have in hand, but we always welcome new students in the fall, and we hope this positive trend in continues. In secondary, for October 2021, it was predicted that we'd have 4,575 students, and if we look, we actually had 4,565, so we're just a little short of our prediction. In March, when you have the January grads, that number always goes down, so currently our March actual is 4,385, but we're very happy to uh, share that for October 2022, our prediction is 4,694, which is an increase of 309 secondary students for the fall. So another good news story. In terms of elementary and secondary staffing, Human Resources works with all the numbers and, and the projections to create a redundancy line. These are staff, uh, we predict how many staff we need based on our enrollment, and I'm very happy to share that for the first time in a very, very long time, there are no redundant teachers at the elementary or secondary level. This means that even our newest permanent staff are retaining their jobs in their current placement, in their current school, and in addition, we're hiring. We will have over 60 elementary postings for new jobs and new employment opportunities for teachers to join our amazing Rainbow staff. And in secondary, in terms of teachers, we'll have over 25 postings. And as you know, considerable effort goes in filling these postings when it comes to creating uh, postings, candidates, interviews, and selecting great teachers to serve our students. This work is underway, and I will tell you that there will also be uh, opportunities for a variety of uh, other roles in our board. I'm just giving a teacher update at this time. But this is also true of other positions such as EAs or DECEs or office clerical staff. In addition, next week, secondary school timetabling is underway. Our secondary school administrators and school timetabling teams will be working hard to create timetables for staff and students for the upcoming school year. This takes weeks of hard work. It's based on predicted enrollment, which feeds staffing allocations to schools, which then creates timetables to uh, try to create schedules for students based on their course selections that occur in the new year. Also, with regard to staffing, some information about the student success leader position. Following 30 years of dedicated service with our board, Principal Heather Gaffney is retiring at the end of the school year. I'd like to thank Heather for her outstanding work. As you know, Heather is a tireless worker in support of our students, staff, and administration, and she'll be greatly missed. I'm also pleased to announce that Principal Maureen McNamara of LaSalle Secondary School will be stepping into the system-wide role effective August 2022. And also an update on our mental health lead. We also extend our thanks to the one and only Mary Jago, who is retiring soon. Mary has demonstrated great leadership and then done an absolutely incredible job building our amazing team that supports our students' mental wellness each and every day. We certainly wish Mary all the best in her retirement and we'll miss her greatly as well. But we also want to welcome Sarah Jokinen, who will be the new mental health lead for Rainbow District School Board effective May 16th, 2022. Some of you will know that Sarah is currently an MSW with our board and has previously worked in social work positions with HSN, mental health and addiction programs, child and adolescent mental health programs, and NeoKids. So we're very fortunate that we have Sarah coming on board in her new role. I'd also like to let you know that a number of acting uh, administrators are now going to be declared permanent, and they include Heather Dubo, 
Lindsey Bennett, Lisa Puddister, Jamie Bouchard, Kyle Gucher, Don Noble McCann, Chelsea Wimet, and Katrina Nado. So these are acting administrators who have done exemplary work and we are forecasting our needs for administration and with some of the vacancies and the resulting backfill, we are now in a place to um, offer these outstanding individuals permanent roles as administrators. We also continue to work on succession planning. So our team has been hard at work on eligibility process interviews. And recently seven teachers were added to the pool of potential uh, hires for vice principal vacancies and four current vice principals were added to the pool for consideration for potential principal vacancies and interviews occurred for that process uh, recently after um, some submissions and uh, several stages and we're very very happy to announce that we've up, uh, updated our eligibility pool for both vice principals and principals and there is also new leader professional development and learning is being led by uh, Principal Gaffney and Principal Danielle Williamson with the support of a program through an OPC, the Ontario Principals Council, to further the professional development of our administrative teams so that they are uh, well versed in a variety of different parts of their role and to help their development as they uh, you know, progress from being acting to permanent uh, vice principals or becoming principals. So that work is also in progress. As you know, uh, we are also at work at the Board Action Plan. There is a draft and it will be presented to the First Nations Advisory Committee, so that work is underway. And Principal Gila Fowl, Principal Dokis, and Vice Principal Najawan have been working very hard on planning for next year. And the team uh, is making great strides in terms of preparation for September 2022. In terms of the Board Improvement and Equity Plan, just a quick update, the Ministry has delayed the implementation. As you know, we were kind of expecting something for the fall, and then it was thought mid-year we would see the Board Improvement and Equity Plan, but we are told now that it will be something that comes into effect for the fall. As you know, we're continuing our work on strategic directions, and there's been considerable effort to align our work with the last draft, so we see this as a, as a um, n nothing's ever completely seamless, but a really great transition and to be able to make sure that our work aligns with the ministry expectations and also aligns with our own personal needs based on our stakeholder feedback through our process. In terms of accommodation, we'll be not, not be bringing an accommodation report forward because we're not recommending any accommodation reviews at this time. As you know, a tremendous amount of work has been done on the revitalization of Rainbow Schools over the years and we continue to move our capital projects forward. Our focus in the coming year will be on the opening of our new K to grade six French Immersion School on the LaSalle Secondary School campus. This is an exciting project that will allow us to consolidate some of our older schools in the new Sudbury area into a bright, modern facility for teaching and learning. Some other pieces that we've been working on, uh, data collection. We have formulated a data collection team made up of program staff and information services staff to look at how we gather data, what data we want to have readily available to our schools to support student success and where there might be gaps. This team has been meeting regularly and we get weekly updates each Tuesday. And we have looked at a number of platforms and spoken with many other school boards to determine what system might work best with our new Aspen student information system. And progress is being made on this uh, weekly, and we're hoping to come to some conclusions soon about a product that may greatly enhance our ability to gather, collect, and report data. In terms of transportation, I know there were some conversations about transportation and the number of cancellations this year, and we did have a, a meeting about this with the Board of Directors of the Starbury Student Services Consortium, and their process to make these decisions were shared with us about how they make these decisions on inclement weather days. We also had a discussion on uh, cancellations based on forecast versus actual weather. And we've begun some discussions on some ideas about how we might reduce the number of inclement weather days next year. 
We're also hard at work on the retirement dinner. The board retirement dinner will take place on Tuesday, May 31st, and we welcome an opportunity to celebrate our long-serving retirees from the past three years. As you know, we delayed this because of the pandemic, and with the current uh, climate and lifting of restrictions, uh, we feel it's time for us to host this event, and it will be hosted in a larger venue to allow for more physical distancing, and we do respect personal choice. So any retiree will have the choice to attend or not to attend, or any of our guests, including yourselves, is completely a choice, and it's understood that people will make the decision that's best for their own personal circumstances as we continue to respect choice as we move to learning to live in this pandemic. The Terry Fox Run is my next update. I'm very pleased to share that we received a letter from the Terry Fox Foundation recently, and they advised us that, in quotes, we're proud to announce that your schools raised $26,721 for cancer research this past year. In 2021, our school message was, try like Terry, and your family of schools did, did just that. I'd like to congratulate all Rainbow Schools for trying like Terry, well done. I'd also like to acknowledge that A.B. Ellis led the way. They have had 39 Terry Fox runs out of a possible 41 since the foundation began. They have raised a total of $423,000 for cancer research. And the Terry Fo Fox Foundation said they are grateful for the leadership of the board for encouraging this, these donations. It is very uh, proud information to share when I say the Rainbow Schools have donated a total of $962,927 to the Terry Fo Fox Foundation over the years. We are nearing the $1 million mark. Quick update on tutors. As you know, the ministry has up to, uh, provided funding to school boards for tutors. Tutor supports focus on students who are at risk, who may have been impacted by learning disruptions caused by the pandemic. We are providing weekly data reports to the ministry regarding the status of the tutoring program. Every Monday by noon, we need to report on the number of students receiving tutoring services this week, the delivery model, the area of focus, literacy or numeracy, or both. We are focusing our efforts on students who are at risk and reaching out to schools directly where the data is showing students require gap closing. The initial focus is also students in grades seven and eight in order to close those gaps prior to starting high school, especially with the new D-Stream curriculum. Schools are providing us with the initial data and we are securing tutors to work at those locations. Many of our tutors are also university students and we will be tracking the results. Also let you know, that uh, our team of uh, Principal Gil Alfau and Vice Principal Najwan are reaching out to all of our First Nation education partners to offer a partnership in tutoring that could be held on in, in communities so that students who are rainbow students may access tutoring supports in the community after school. So that work is also uh, going on in terms of our tutor efforts uh, in preparation to support a good a uh, strong close to the school year and a strong summer learning program season and also hopefully a very strong start to the next school year, which is a good segue for summer learning. Also, staff is hard at work on focusing our efforts on the organization of summer learning programs for elementary and secondary students, the final push for kindergarten registrations and the organization of kindergarten camp. All these initiatives require postings, interviews and training of candidates to ensure successful programs. Tutors will also be part of this program. Professional learning, quick update here. We are heading into a very significant planning period for next year, focusing on improvement for our students who are currently not achieving to their full potential in search of equity of outcome. Designing professional learning for staff about students who may have learning challenges, and focusing on equity and inclusion so we better understand how to support all of our students' achievement. In addition, as you know, many of you have been getting updates or on the ad hoc committee for the student census. The student census work continues to prepare for our fall. Consultations are being completed and an electronic platform for the census has been reviewed and selected. And this has been tremendous amount of work uh, by Superintendent Noble in consultation with many of our trustees 
and the Equity Committee. Environmental education, our monthly challenges continue and our dedicated committee continues to provide value of supports. Student Senate work, I know Student Trustee Yao is not here, but our Student Senate continues to work in preparation for the Student Conference, which is always a, one of the highlights of the year. So that work is ongoing. In addition, preparations continue for the upcoming EQAO and OSSLT tests. Our staff and students are hard at work on this preparation. Um, on, on a co-curricular side, the winter sports season has successfully concluded and our dedicated coaches and student athletes are looking forward to spring sports and working hard in preparation for that schedule. And we'll end with a celebration. As I said, this is just a snapshot of some things that everyone's hard at work on, but you can see there's considerable efforts being made and to prepare for this year and to fi finish this year strong. But I'd like to highlight Mr. Dale Beausoleil. Dale Beausoleil is an amazing teacher and coach at Northeastern. Dale also coaches at LaSalle Secondary School and Cambrian College. And under the guidance of Coach Beausoleil, some of you will remember LaSalle Secondary School's volleyball team is a perennial OFSA contender, and OFSA being the provincial All-Ontario Championships. And they are this year's bronze medalists playing up in AAA when they could have been playing in AA. This is how strong these teams are. And I would like to congratulate him as one of our hardworking staff, since that's the theme of my update tonight about how much hard work is going on, to say that Coach Beausoleil has done something no one has ever done before. As the college coach at Cambrian, he is the, the first time ever, Mr. Beausoleil won the male coach of the year for volleyball and the female coach of the year provincially for all colleges of Ontario. He was the coach of the year for both programs at Cambrian College. He's a teacher at Northeastern. He's well known to all for his excellence, not only as a teacher, but as a coach, and his work at LaSalle and Northeastern, but in addition, provincially recognized for his excellence. So there's a wonderful example of how hard our staff are working and their commitment to students. And when I say that, it's administrators, teachers, EAs, DECs, office staff, QP staff, you name it. I'm so proud to be part of this system and so grateful for all the hard work. And I thought I'd share that as I close my remarks for today. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Just when we think everything is quiet and in our board it is not quiet at all it's very busy it's nice to see and i can still remember if any of you know how long was it that terry fox ran through our town my son was three years old standing on the side of the road when terry ran by that is 40 42 years ago he ran through mccarroll and we are keeping his name alive well in our board and that's great to see really nice uh, number four, we're going to the OSFA director. Uh, I have nothing to report, but I, uh, I had asked Trustee Gibson to attend the North Region meeting on my behalf, and uh, she may have something to report. Uh, I'll leave it up to her if she wants to say something there. Thank you, Trustee Cosmerly. Um, I did attend the, the Northern Region meeting on uh, Saturday, April 9th, um, and there was some discussion um, around OPSPA strategic planning. There was a new policy resolution um, brought for discussion around continuing access to virtual meetings. Um, some of the directors um, keeping in mind that, that we are some of the furthest south in, in that group, so they're a lot uh, further north than us, and some of them, um, in order to attend meetings, are looking at, you know, traveling for several days. So there's a suggestion there to keep some of those uh, meetings virtual so that uh, more people can have an opportunity to attend. Um, and there was a discussion um, about how directors report back to their boards, like we're doing right now, so that was interesting to see the different uh, practices that people shared. And Chair Evans shared that she will not be uh, running again uh, for the chair position, so uh, that will be open um, uh, for election at the annual general meeting came, coming up in June. Uh, so that was just about it. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to attend, Trustee Cosmoly. 
and um, I'll give it back to you, Chair Clement. Thank you, Trustee Gibson. Where are we now? We're going to, uh, student trustee uh, Yao is not here. So we'll go to trustees' remarks. Do, does anybody have any remarks? Uh, excuse me, Chair Clement. Um, I actually have a question, if that's all right, for the director. Go ahead. Um, it was um, actually just regarding um, some something in the update that he just shared. Um, so thank you very much for the comprehensive update. I was just curious about the discussions with the uh, consortium uh, around bus cancellations, and you mentioned about weather. I was just wondering if there was any update regarding um, recruitment of drivers, because sometimes the cancellations were due to lack of either availability due to illness or just uh, not enough of a pool. So was there any discussion about that? I was just looking for a short update. Through you, Chair Clement, and thank you, Trustee Gibson, for your question. Uh, this meeting was more about the process for determining whether uh, buses should run or not, uh, with a lens to how to uh, maybe mitigate some of the cancellations, and uh, we're just ongoing discussions about that. I do know, uh, and Superintendent Bazinet may wish to add to this, that this is uh, the shortage of drivers. Uh, there's a shortage of staff in so many sectors, not just in Sudbury, but across the province in many ways. Uh, I do know it's ongoing work of the consortium to try to uh, attract and retain new drivers, and I know they're hard at work of that for the fall. But in this particular meeting, that wasn't the focus of the conversation, but I can assure you that their goal uh, of all of the providers is to uh, build on the number of available drivers that they have in preparation for the fall. And uh, we'll certainly get updates from, from Rene Boucher on that in the uh, preparation for the upcoming school year. And I know that they have some time to continue that work. I think they're on continuous intake at this point with a lens to building their capacity for the fall. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I guess we can go right to uh, Karen's remarks. Uh, I got a f here's a few uh, ways our vision, mission, values, and priorities are coming to life in Rainbow Schools. On April 1st, students from uh, Queen Elizabeth II Public School wore blue in support of World Autism Day. Kindergarten students from RLVD Public School spent a fun day at Maple Hills Farm learning how to make maple syrup. Grade four students from Cyril Varney Public School mastered the art of coding and hosted a video arcade to share their skills with the entire school. Students in grades seven and eight at S. Geiger Public School learned the ins and outs of using microscopes. Students in the Chelmsford Valley District Public School, specialist high skills majors in the arts and culture began their work on a mural for the school entrance. Members of the Sudbury Five basketball team played a game of hoops with the grade seven and eight students from Mark State Public School. The Manitoulin Metal Robotics team competed at the York University Regional Qualifying in Toronto, as well as the Provincial Championships in Mississauga. Joining MFS at the first robotics championship was Llewellyn Park Secondary School School Robotics Team. Congratulations to all. Transition students from Sudbury Secondary Schools have become authors, illustrators, and published their own books. In conference, Secondary Schools, Secondary Schools Volleyball Team won the Division I City Championships last month with an undefeated season. That was outstanding. And continuing with Director Bourget's mentioning of upcoming speakers, here is something that is near and dear to my heart is another one taking place this week as part of the ABLS Public School Speaking Series. The ABLS School Council will present Growing Up Autistic and Being Okay. I don't know if you can see it here. That's his book. With local author Blake Priddle on Thursday, April 21st at 7 p.m. This online presentation is the first of three in a speaking series being presented by the school with parents reaching out grant. The link is to register, is available at the ABL uh, website. Anyone is welcome. Now I've known Blake since he was a child. 
his dad coming to me when I was a board years ago and asking for help and directing him to the spec ed people at uh, A.B. Ellis, and then his journey began. It's been a long journey, and what a grateful journey, and it turned out to be so great. I usually have a little quote, and it's going to be for Autism Month this month, and it comes from my favorite author. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? Dr. Zeus. Now, uh, information uh, and proposals. We have none reports from officials and staff, parents involvement committee, and special ed advisory committee have their reports on, online on the, on the board website. Uh, future meetings, they're all there for you. Please take date of these meetings if you're on these committees and uh, so you can be at these committee meetings. And that's about all that we have for tonight. Um, I wanna thank everybody for being here and we'll see you uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to adjourn. I need a mover, please. Uh, Trustee Honda. And a move, uh, a seconder, Trustee Dewar. Thank you much, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.